Hi, I'm Eva from Wicklow Willow and welcome to our totem decorating workshop. Okay, so we're going to paint up the forage piece of timber that you collected for this workshop um, before we started. Okay, so there's a few things you're going to need in addition to that. Um, this is one that I made already. Okay, so we've got some nice decorations here. I've got some nice kind of dots and lines and I've kind of followed like the natural kind of forms on the timber. So I'm going to show you how to do all that. Okay. Um, and then you can see here then we've got some stripes as we go down okay so that's quite a, a substantial totem I think and I think it looks looks really colorful and really well so we're going to aim to do something like that okay so I'm going to leave that down for a minute um, and I'm going to go through some of the materials that you're going to need okay so you're going to need some acrylic paint okay because acrylic paint is um, well this is this is a water soluble acrylic paint but it doesn't come off in in the weather okay so you know poster paints and that kind of thing they won't stand up to the weather you can definitely use them there's absolutely no problem with using them but if you want your totem to last a little bit longer for the colors to stay to be a little bit more vibrant then the acrylic paint is really good for this okay you're going to need a sheet of sandpaper you're going to need some masking tape it doesn't have to be the really thick one it can be the thin one as well so either or it doesn't really matter this is just to help you along to get some of your your shapes on your totem okay you're going to need different paint brushes maybe you know like a thick one you don't have to have all of these ones but just like you know maybe um a thick one and a middle sized one something like that and then some thin ones as well so you don't have to have like that many but like a couple, a couple of different sizes three different sizes would be perfect okay now i have my paint out here already so i have my colors out i have some black green red and then i have some white and blue and purple and yellow it's but it's whatever colors you want okay so you pick the colors before you start and um, you might only want to do two colors or you might want to do four colors or you might want to mix them all up but it's entirely up to you so i'm just going to show you how i'm going to use these paints today and how i'm going to use the materials that i have and then you're free to use your creativity to develop your totem however way that you want okay another thing that you need is you're going to need a jar of water okay and some kitchen towel okay because you want to clean your brushes in between your colors to keep them nice and clean okay so that's the best way to do it okay now another thing you're going to need is definitely you're going to need the piece of of of, of stick that you foraged in the wood for this okay so this in the in the earlier video you you saw that i found this on the wood floor it was a piece of birch okay and what's happened here is i've cut it down okay so it's important to tidy up your totem before you start you don't want it too big I think this is is a nice size okay so when you put it in the ground it's going to be when once you make your hole to set it in the ground it's going to be a little bit shorter than this but it's a nice size to have outside your wigwam or in your garden okay it's not too thick it's got the bark on it's got some bumpy pieces on it okay so they're all going to make for really interesting decorating so we kind of like that okay so just i suppose just to discuss how you might prepare your foraged piece of timber so if you can get your um mum or dad or a grown-up to saw it nice and flat for you on either end okay so you'll need help and you'll need to get an adult to help you to do that okay and then if there's any branches sticking out if you're your like smaller branches or kind of big pieces like you know that it might be kind of this one here was an was an older branch it had broken off and I found it but it would have had a long piece growing out like that so if there's any branches just give them a little bit of trim but if you like the look of them definitely leave them on okay so before you start painting um, your branch, what you need to do is you just need to have a look at if there's any loose um, bark or anything like that. Okay, so I, I've taken off most of it, but I've just noticed here that there's a bit down the bottom. Okay, so just take off whatever peels away. Okay, it doesn't have to be the whole thing. You don't have to take off all the bark. It's just the rotten bark. So often with windfall, you'll find that the bark can be a little bit rotten. And I've got most of it off there. And I'm just going to take it off like that. And you have a look at your branch all the way up. And all the way down it and take off any loose bits of bark like that okay and i'm just going to have another little look just before i get the sandpaper out and i think that's fine okay now before i start painting what i'm going to do then is the part that i've just peeled off i'm just going to give it a bit of a rub just up and down with the sandpaper and just make it a little bit smooth okay and take a bit of that dirt, kind of roughness off it, okay now, okay and that's perfect okay now next thing I'm going to do before I start painting is I'm going to get my masking tape out okay so this stuff is great okay so what it does is it kind of we can wrap it around sections of the of the branch and we can create kind of different kind of color stripes okay we can leave parts of it bare with the 
with the, the sorry the bark coming through and then the under part of the, of the bark coming through and that should give some nice contrast to to our totem okay so i'm going to take off a strip like that and i'm going to put one down the bottom here because i like the way the bark is down here so i'm just going to wrap it all the way around and just not you don't have to have it too tight but just nice and i think that's what will happen then is when i paint either side of that that will remain bare and when we take that off when we're finished we'll have this bare nice piece of branch coming through okay and as well as that what that's going to happen then is we're going to kind of create these kind of colored blocks up along the branch and it, and it should work really well okay so i'm going to put another one up a little bit further i'm going to put it around here so i'm going to leave a kind of a small gap not too much of a gap so i've made left but similar thickness to the thickness of the masking tape and i've left a gap there and i'm going to put that on so you can start to see how it's going to build up so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a few more on i think i might put on another one here and another one here and i might put a few up the top as well to break it up okay i think it's nice when you're working with timber to show that the, what what the true the true kind of nature of the, the material that you're working with to kind of leave it coming through and it just kind of gives a nice i don't know a kind of appealing look when you're finished so it, it often kind of stays part of what's around us and part of of nature in that way okay so i've put on four along now okay and what i'm going to do is this part is kind of bare here quite a bit of bark came out here so that might be a nice part for painting so you can make some decisions as you're doing this have a look at your branch up and down possibly before you start putting on your masking tape and make some decisions say okay where am i going to put my masking tape where would it look good you know what do i want to leave exposed what do i want to paint okay those kind of things okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave this part here it's nice and bare all the way up here it's got some lovely shapes where some of the bark came off and some of it didn't so i'm going to leave all of that bare and i'm going to come up to this part here we've got quite a lot of kind of uh, bumpy bits here and I, I really like them they look great so what i'm going to do is i might block some of them off to show them off too and I'm going to put maybe another band up the top, okay? So I like these bumpy bits, so I'm going to try and keep them. Keeps it nice and clean. It's a really handy way to do it. So wrap up the bumpy bits there. Going to make this band a little bit thicker than the other ones. So I'm going to do it twice the width. And I'm going to wrap that around like that. Okay, now... And I'm going to put one more up the top before I start painting. Okay, so another strip of that. And I'll cover it up here, like this as well. Okay. And all the way around. And then you have this clean stripe all the way up. Okay, so we've got a quite a bit of it covered up there. It's just, that's the kind of the base or the foundation to start with. Okay, now, the next thing I'm going to do, right, is I'm going to get my thick paintbrush okay and i'm going to get my white paint out okay so i'm going to use my white and my thick paintbrush okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to paint in between these stripes white and the reason why i'm doing that is i'm kind of giving it an undercoat okay so when i put the white on and i let it dry when i put my other colors on top of it after the white has dried it leaves those colors really really vibrant okay otherwise what happens is sometimes those colors get soaked into the timber and you can't see them as well you don't need to put the white on if you prefer to have those colors as part you know maybe a little bit duller over the timber then you can do that as well but i find that the white works really really well but you can do it whatever way you want okay so i'm going to get a bit of that white you don't need too much and you can just you don't have to be too careful because you have the masking tape on either side of it so that's the really handy part of the masking tape is that you will have those nice lines left and you don't have to be too concerned with how you put on the paint okay so i'm going to follow that all the way around okay now i'm going to do that all the way down all of these stripes here i'm going to give an undercoat to because when i put my red or my green or my blue or my yellow or my purple on top then it'll really really kind of spring out at you and that's what you want because in your garden when you look at your totem you're going to have this really bright striped stick coming right at you and that's what you want you want your eye to get drawn to it and it'll be really really good okay so i'm getting there and then in between this white if you remember what i said i had the bare piece of timber so you're going to have your really vibrant colors and then you're going to have this bare bark timber kind of spaced out in between and it should really 
a really nice contrast between between it all now i'm going to leave this part here bare because this part here is the bottom part for me so i'm going to choose the thicker part of my branch for the bottom and i'm going to be inserting it into the ground it's probably going to go into the ground up to about there maybe about 10 centimeters to hold it up so i'm not going to paint down there okay now i've left this whole section here along nice and bare for the timber but what i'm going to do is I'm going to give that a little bit of an undercoat in a moment too, okay? Now I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to paint in between here white as well. And I'm going to give the top part a nice white coat as well. And that way I have some of the bare timber coming through in parts and then I'll have these really vibrant blocks of colour coming through as well. Okay, now the white really covers it down really, really well and it goes over the bark really well as well. Now it will dry back into the timber because the timber does absorb a certain amount of paint, but that doesn't matter, okay? And it is pretty handy the way it goes on. Now, the white is kind of showing up. I can see them here. All the bumps are coming out there as well, and they'll look really, really well when they're painted up, okay? So we've got a nice side branch that I cut off there earlier on, and I'm going to paint over that as well. So when you're doing your totem, maybe think of the animals in your garden or the flowers in your garden and all the shapes that they lend to you. OK, so even the insects um, and, you know, different kind of even shades, maybe that the sunlight shows patterns on the ground. So you're kind of trying to think of patterns and shapes that might look really, really well as part of your totem, because what you want it to do is you want it to reflect, you know, your garden, how you feel when you're in your garden, those kind of things. So that's what I like to think of when I do my totem. OK. Now, next thing I'm going to do with the white is I'm going to cover down the parts of the, of, the, of the bark that's left on. So I have the timber, which is nice and smooth here, but then where the bark didn't peel off easily, I have these kind of nice shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill those up with white and then I can paint down on them and I'm going to leave this section here bare. And I might put some shapes into it and other colours in afterwards, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this up with white first, okay? Following the line of the bark, okay? So I'll show you how to do that going to get a smaller brush for that okay and I'm going to follow the line of the bark you don't have to be too too particular but if you can see I have these nice kind of shapes here and I think the way it kind of naturally has come off I think that should it kind of gives you a nice um, shape to work with without having to to think too much about what what way that would would be okay so if you can see the way I'm just going to cover that up there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow that outline first in white all the way up and it'll take a minute or two to do it and I'm going to follow all the way around so sometimes the bark comes off around some of where old branches were and I'm going to follow that around in a curve and I'm going to have to twist it around like this now so I'm following it all the way around the back like this continuing to follow the edge of the bark all the way around and then in between this outline, I'm going to fill up with white paint as well. All right, so I'm following that all the way down. You can see the way it's kind of coming through. And then we have this bare wood left as well. Now there's quite a big bump there in the bark, but that'll look really well as a feature on our totem because it'll give it like texture and it'll kind of give it almost like a feeling that it's coming out at you, okay? So again, I'm going to follow it all the way around now you will need an adult to help you with this, so it might be a good idea to ask someone to help you to hold it or to even paint it with you or for you to make the decisions for them to paint it, depending on, on what you want to do, okay? So what I've done then is I follow that all the way around, okay? And now what I have is this bark kind of central part, okay? So it's almost like I've, I've blocked it off and now I'm going to get a slightly bigger paintbrush and I get my white again and I'm just going to block in that bark. And that way I don't have to be too concerned. I've done my outline close to the closer part of where the kind of smooth part of the wood is. And now I'm going to fill in this with white. And I'm going to cover all those bumps down again. And th what that does is kind of gives you, it kind of goes into all these little cracks and it highlights some of the shapes, helps you even see them a little bit better sometimes. And then as you're painting your totem, you can decide what maybe some of the shapes look like or what they remind you of and then that can inspire you to create you know your different shapes or different designs on your totem so it's really important to kind of have a look at the material that you're working with 
and to use that for your inspiration because it has come from the woods and it's come from nature and you're going to create something really nice that you're going to put into into nature for you to look at and for your friends and your family to look at so you want to make it look as kind of i suppose as decorative and as as close to nature as you can so just finishing this off here and now i have the whole thing painted down where i want it white so that's that for the moment okay i'm going to leave that down now i want to give that maybe five or ten minutes to dry and then we're going to come back and paint it okay so just give it a few minutes to dry off and then we'll start with that next part and do put the paint in okay Now we've given it some time for the white paint to dry so we have it dry enough to paint so what we're going to do is we're going to block paint and um, the sections in between the masking tape okay so i'm going to put a color in between here these two pieces just here another one here and another one here and then i'm going to go up the top and i'm going to put a, a big block of color in here and at the very top so we've got masking tape in between here which will help me divide up those pieces of um, or sections of the photo okay so um, one of my favourite colours is purple, so I'm going to go with that. So it's whatever you like yourself, you go for whatever colours are your favourite colours. I'm um, just going to get a good bit of it on your brush and then I'm going to paint over the white, okay? And what will that do then, is what that lets, um, sorry, what happens with the paint then is that it, it just is it's nice and thick. You have a nice good thick coat of it there, but also the white underneath lets the, the purple stand out really well, okay? So we're going to go over all those bumps. It's good to kind of, you know, just get your paintbrush and, and it, you know, kind of stand it on its end like that and give it a little bit of a kind of a, a, a jiggle around so you get through to all the cracks, okay? So now I'm going to put more on here and I'm going to continue to go all the way around. I'm going to turn my, my stick as I go. And again, just to remind you that because we have the masking tape on either side, when we take off the masking tape when our paint is fully dry it means that you're going to have these nice clean lines and you're going to have the bare wood on either side that you'll be able to see and it should look really good okay now i have my purple on just want to make sure that i have it all colored all colored down the way i want it to be acrylic paint dries pretty quickly so once you have a good layer of it on you know give it a few minutes to dry five or ten minutes and it should be dry it's a really fast drying kind of paint well if it's not too thick you know you can check it with your finger anyway okay so i'm going to go to my next section so my purple on i'm going to go for red next so i'm going to get some red out i'm going to move this over here a bit a bit closer to me and i'm going to put some red on i might come back later on and put a few splashes of color back into these areas if i want but i'll make that decision afterwards okay so as i paint and as i work through my totem i'm going to make decisions as i go along so it really is whatever you think you want it to be okay so you can change it or you can add to it it doesn't make any difference at all it's entirely your artwork so it's your decisions all the way along okay now I'm gonna get the paint all the way around keep on going I keep on turning that as I go and I'm gonna have a nice covering of red all the way around okay and the red should be really really vibrant when the white is underneath it's slightly duller if it's not but that's okay so have a little think before you start painting on your white and you can make your decisions yeah. okay now we have the red on there's a bumpy bit there just make sure you get your red around it and i've got my red on okay now i think i'm going to put some yellow on so i get this brush for that it saves me having to, to dry them off in between and wash them when you are washing your brushes in between make sure you get all the color off okay so really put your paint brushes into the water give them a good swish around and do that a few times and dry them in between with the with the um, kitchen towel because often if you don't have your paintbrush clean what will happen is the color that you were using beforehand will mix up with the the, 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 the new color that you're using and then what happens is your paints get mixed up and often if you keep on doing that the colors can get kind of dirty and you don't want the colors to be too dirty because you want your colors to be nice and bright so remember to give your paintbrushes really a really good clean and if you need to change the water do that as well okay so this way it kind of makes sure that you have really bright clean crisp colors on your totem and it will really stand out well okay now i have my yellow done for that so i have my three colors down at the end and once this is all dried when we have all of this painted up 
I'm going to show you how to take off the masking tape and you'll see how they'll stand out. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the whole thing over to this side here. I'm going to turn it around, leave the wet paint down that end and now I'm going to give this part a bit of a paint, okay? So I really, really like the red colour, so I'm going to put some red on the top. I think it really stands out. I think it would look really, really good at the top of my coat, okay? Now, to make sure I'm going to balance that there on the table. Oops, for a bit. Okay, that fell down there. Can I move some of these paints? Get a bit of space, okay? Might be useful to get someone to, to hold it with you. That'd be really handy. That's why it wouldn't have slipped off the table if I'd had someone hold it. So I'm going to paint it all the way around, okay? Now, you'll see here I have this section here. It's kind of flat. It's where there's a, there was a side branch that I cut off. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave the white visible on that because what I'm thinking is I might leave an eye there, okay? So I'm kind of trying to think ahead of what my design is going to be. So if I leave the white there in a circle on where the branch was cut off, what I can do, I can come back later on, I can put on a little colourful eye. It will really stand out at the top of my totem. It'll be like an eye looking out watching over the garden making sure that all the birds all the bees and all the flowers are happy and doing what they need to be doing growing really well throughout the summer okay so it's like a, a little guardian of the garden watching out over the garden and making sure all the parts of the garden are happy and well okay i'm going to continue then with my painting all the way around the top leaving that bit white and i'm going to cover it right down all the way around Okay, nearly there now. It's coming on okay. And I think I'll bring it right up to the top and I'm going to paint the top part white, or sorry, not white. I'm going to paint it red as well. And it kind of just gives it that little bit of extra protection as well from the, from the rain and, and that kind of thing. Because what happens with wood is often when the rain kind of hits it on the top of the branch all the time, it can rot in the centre. But if I put a bit of extra paint on that part, then that will help that not happen. Okay, so to do that, I'm just going to get a bit of red and just going to cover it down there like that. If you want, you can decorate that further later on, but nobody's really going to see the top of the totem anyway, unless they're tall. So, but I mean, if so, if you want, you can have for the taller people in your house, you can have a special decoration there on the top. Okay, now I'm going to do one more black color before I start doing a bit more details, and I'm going to put that here, and I'm going to put a nice blue on it. So I have a nice blue here. It's like the sky, so it's going to reflect the colour of the sky, hopefully. Might even put a few other colours on top of it afterwards. But this is a nice, really kind of vibrant blue. And I really, really like this colour. So I'm going to put it down here. And I'm going to cover the whole thing down, all the way around. So I'm nearly there with my block colours. And if I get this painted all the way around, then that'll be done. And what I'm going to do then is, I'm going to leave them dry for a while, because it's important to leave... A little bit of time in between your painting okay so it, it gives your colors time to dry in between just a few minutes in in a dry place make sure that it's not raining on top of it because they won't dry if they're getting wet and what will happen then is when you come back to them when they're dry the colors won't mix up together it also gives you then the opportunity to paint over them and to put in other decorations and other designs on top okay so remember to give yourself a little bit of a little bit of time have a cup of tea maybe little bit of time now I have all of those painted up I have my favorite colors put in so I have my two blocks on that end my three blocks of color on that end and I'm going to come back now when these are dry and I'm going to start painting in here okay okay so now I'm going to have a look at the next part of this that we're going to paint and I was just having a little look there at the, the shape of here so we have this outline in white but there's a shape here that kind of reminds me a little bit like an oak leaf, okay? And my garden is surrounded with oak. We have it on beach as well, but a lot of oak. And I kind of thought it might be a nice thing to put in the shape of a few oak leaves. And that kind of reflects, you know, your own garden. So that's kind of a way of maybe looking at this, is that your totem might reflect your environment and your garden and, 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 and how you, you what, well, maybe your most favourite plants or your most favourite trees that you like to look at and play under and that kind of thing, okay? So... I, when I say that, then I'm going to have a little go at putting in an oak leaf there. Now, an oak leaf is kind of a, a kind of almost like a, kind of a bumpy leaf. Okay, it doesn't have to be exact, but just a little bit like an oak leaf. So I'm going to start by getting my green, and I'm going to follow this nice shape here. Okay, so we have the top of the oak leaf here, and then I'm going to follow this bump around here. And you can see I have the outline 
of the white there so I'm going to make use of that and that's what inspired me to put the oak leaf in here to begin with so I'm going to follow that around there bringing it right up to the edge of that white so the green now on this side it's not as clear so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make up that shape I'm going to leave a little gap there but I'm going to come back to that and fill it in with a different color later on so what I'm kind of doing is I'm using the shape that the bark has given me but then I'm going to make up my own nice kind of fluid curved lines in between all that okay so following that down I'm going to go in here we've got a nice little shape of the bark that goes in there like that the other side of the oak leaf I'm going to continue my shape here for the oak leaf so I've got one side of it done all along here as you can see and now I'm going to follow around the other side I'm going to give another little kind of bump coming out there for the other side and I'm going to put another bump in there so then I'm kind of have the, the outline of the leaf in there, okay? And then I'm going to fill in the center part, okay? So that's my first oak leaf in. I'm going to just redo the edge of that a bit with my paintbrush and just do the nice curves following that shape again. Okay, so working on that theme, I'm going to go for another oak leaf. I think it would work really well, okay? And before I go on to do that, I'm just going to put in a little stem coming out of my oak leaf down there. Okay, so we have one oak leaf there. Okay, if you can see that, I'll hold it up. So we've got an oak leaf there. So now I'm having a look at the shapes up here. And again, I have this nice kind of bumpy shape kind of coming along here. So I'm going to put another oak leaf up there. Okay. So I'm going to go for that one there. I'm going to follow these bumps around here. So the outline, I'm using the white as the outline of my oak leaf. And oak leaves come in all different shapes. So we don't have to be too particular. There's no perfect shape. They're all different and that's what makes them so beautiful, okay? So I'm going to follow that bump down there. And then I'm going to bring it over here. And I'm going to come to the top of my leaf with the bump at the top. And then I'm going to follow this down here. Now, I'm going to cross over a little bit onto my white to continue with the shape of the oak leaf. Like this. And then the other side, keep on going around. Continuing with my outline here for my shape. Bit of extra paint there in the middle just to kind of thicken it up a bit so it's a bit more visible on top of the bare wood. And I'm going to continue up here, put up one more bump up here to join up with this and then fill it in. Okay, so I've got another oak leaf on my totem now. Okay. And I've got the top of it up there. I'm going to redo that part because on the bare parts of the wood where the bark has been taken off, the paint isn't as visible, okay? So you just need to give it a little extra, an extra bit. I'm going to come along then and I'm going to draw a little stem up there. Now, I'm going to leave those for a minute and I'm going to continue with the painting and I'm going to come back to them and finish them off in a few minutes, okay? So, I'm having another little look here, okay, at, at, my, at my piece of wood. And you see the way we have this outline going around here. So I'm just going to fill it in with different shapes, okay? I'm going to have a little kind of think about how that might work, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a different paintbrush. I'm going to give that a bit of a wash because the acrylic paint dries really, really fast onto things, okay? So if you leave your paintbrush in the acrylic paint and you don't give it a wash at all, what happens is your paintbrush will get all dried up and you won't be able to use it. So you need to, you need to give it a wash. That'll do for the moment, okay? Now, I'm going to get another paintbrush. I'm going to start putting on a different colour here, okay? So I have different kind of bumpy bits here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight them a bit. I'm going to get a bit of red, and I'm going to put that on around these. And I'm just using the shapes of the wood that's already there, okay? So I'm going to go around the bumpy bits with red like this. And what that's going to do is it's going to just kind of give me a natural kind of pattern. So those bumpy bits were all kind of little kind of growths on the birch tree, okay? And now what I'm kind of thinking is like, well, those little growths, they look really nice where they are. They're kind of random. Their pattern is really good and I can see them really well. So I'm going to make use of them. So I'm going to put red all around each of them. And then I'm going to come back, I think, and I'm going to fill in around that in a few minutes with some different colored paint. And then that gives me a kind of a, well, a unique pattern. So it's going to be your own because each branch is different. And in doing that then, each person who makes a totem like this is going to do it really differently. And that's what's going to make each totem completely unique, okay? Completely unique to the person who's made them. And then completely unique to the garden that they're in. And then also completely unique to the branch, I suppose, that you, that you use to make. 
So don't forget to kind of dab your paintbrush down like that to get into each of the, the cracks and all the holes that are in it there. Okay, now I'm going to, if you can see that there, I've got all those kind of bumps now with little red around them. I'm going to turn this around like this, going to have a look and see what else, what other kind of features are on, on my, my, my pole or my totem. I've got this kind of little kind of, it's like as if something has eaten away here. I'm not sure what it was, maybe a little bit of rot or something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make use of that shape as well. So it's kind of nice to make use of what you have. I'm going to give that a wash before I go on. I'm going to get a different paintbrush. And I think I'm going to go for a bit of yellow this time. Really bright, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline this in a bit of yellow. And then you'll be able to see the shape that I'm talking about. And we might even leave the centre of that bare, so you can see that internal part of the, well, what's underneath the, the bark or inside in, in the tree itself, the wood itself exposed. And it just kind of shows off a little bit of what, or the history, I suppose, of the ranch, okay? So I've got my yellow on there. Now, the yellow is harder to see, so it might be worth coming back at that a little bit and coming over it a second time just to give it a little bit more thickness to the paint I suppose and so you can see it a bit better okay now, so you see the way it's starting to come together now I have another bump there as well and I think what I'm going to do is I've got lots of lots of different birds in my garden okay and they come and go from their nests and they come and go from a bird feeder that we have and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little eye out of that and I think it would look really well so if I put a little eye here and I can maybe use this lump over here that's covered in white I can maybe make a nice kind of nice abstract maybe bird's face to represent all the birds that are in my garden that sing and cheer me up in the morning okay so I'm gonna get a bit of white for that and I'm gonna blob it down there on top of that make a nice round eye so when I'm going to come back later on when that that white is dried and I'm going to put my eyeball in the middle of it okay and it'll look really good okay so what I'm going to say is I've got a little kind of lump here for one eye and I'm going to use this lump over here and coming down here in the middle I'm going to draw a nice beak okay so I'm going to go back to my yellow okay put that down for a minute just need to clean this off a bit because otherwise it gets fairly dirty and I have green in it so I want to just get rid of that all right now I'm gonna go to my yellow now, remember I said this is going to be an eye so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this here and I'm gonna put a big yellow beak coming down so it's gonna be just a, a basic beak you'll see how this works as it goes on but I'm gonna say one eye two eyes and then this beak coming down the center okay and then that will be my it could be a, a crow maybe put it or some other kind of bird but it'll look really really good we've got lots of crows in our garden so I think it'll look it'll look pretty good so crows usually have black bases don't they so I'm gonna put on some black now to fill in my crows face okay so I've got some black here and the sun is starting to dry out my paint there, so I'm going to have to take that skin off there and put my paintbrush in. Now, and I'm going to go up here for the, for the head of the crow. So in between the two eyes that I've chosen, I'm going to fill in with black. Okay, continue to fill this in with black here, all the way around the eye. So we've got the bird's face. I'm going to bring it right down to where this other yellow is. And down here. I'm going to finish it there just so we don't bring it down too far say so that's the birds behind and bring the black around the eye here so it doesn't really matter what shape this is this is all just well fairly abstract it doesn't have to be a realistic version of a bird or anything like that it's just to kind of give the idea that there's a bird there okay and it can be a funny looking bird or it can be a very serious looking bird whatever you want okay so I'm going to bring that right up there to meet the oak leaf okay so I'm going to bring all my lines together and then that will help define the shape of the oak as well. Okay. And that will bring all my pictures together. So it's kind of important, I suppose, that you have your all your, your parts of your design kind of coming together. And what that means then is that there, there won't be any gaps. There'll be some gaps, but not too many gaps, okay? 
So I'm going to bring the black over to as far as there. Now I'm having another look at it here. And I'm going to bring the black over a bit further underneath the eye on this side. So that means I've gone over the white there on that part, but that doesn't matter. It's just the white is for later on for when we're putting in other colours. So I'll bring the black over here. I'm going to leave this eye like this. So I've got one eye and my second eye. And now I'm going to find the outside of the bird's head. So I'm going to bring it all the way around here to say well, that's the top of my bird's head there. That goes all the way up. So he's got a funny looking eye. He's got one eye looking down and one eye looking up. He's keeping an eye on the whole garden. Okay, and that's what you need. You need a good bird on your totem pole to make sure that your whole garden is being looked after. But it also means that when he's looking for worms, I suppose, that he can be looking in two different places at the same time, which is kind of useful. Now, so... Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my black and I'm going to put my eyeball in the middle. So I have an eyeball there and an eyeball there and I have my bird on my totem. So if I turn that around we've got a funny looking bird. He's kind of looking out over our garden. Okay. Now, okay. now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and fill in some of these colours. I actually really like the way that this is bare here so I might actually leave that bare. But I'm going to put in a few more like lines here and there just to kind of lift it a bit, okay? So I'll leave that there for a minute and I'm going to come back to my purple this time. Sorry, just drop my paintbrush now. Okay, so the purple, okay? So I'm going to put some purple on this time, a bit too much paint on my brush. I'm just going to make this up now as I go along. I'm not, there's no real, you know, rules to this. It's just whatever you think. So you have a look at this video and you have a look at what I do and then you think oh I really like that or maybe I'll do something different then that's exactly how you should do it you should do it whatever way you like to do it okay so I'm just going to very carefully make a nice outline in purple and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it out maybe like this and I'm going to make a triangle shape because there's lots of different patterns and shapes in our gardens and if I were to bring a triangle out there I think that would look nice I'll bring it back then to meet up with that yellow. The top of it looks like a triangle and it's coming out. I'm going to do a smaller one beside it and I have some excellent shapes going on there. Okay, so I'm going to bring it back in there again to meet the yellow and just finish it out there like that. Okay, and I'm going to go back over that one a bit just to make the shape a bit better. And there we go. Okay, so I've got a little bit of purple on. Okay, now I'm having a look here at this shape here. I think the uh, triangle was a good idea, so I'm going to do one more just here, and then that will finish out that section there. And I think it'll be an interesting, an interesting thing to look at. All right, now, another one there. So we've got nice shapes coming out of our totem. Yeah. Okay. Now we're nearly there. All right, so we've got the whole thing. I'm gonna give it a bit of a turn. We've got some oak leaves here. We have our bird. We have some nice triangles for different patterns and shadows that we might see in the garden. I'm gonna turn it all the way around there so you can have a look at that. And then we have these red bumps that show us that the red bumps are our natural kind of growth on the birch that we're just kind of highlighting, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put in a few dots. So if you look at some of kind of Aboriginal kind of art and stuff like that, they have like lots and lots of dots on their work, okay? So it'd be really good to have a look on the internet with your with an adult and have a look at maybe for some inspiration for that as well. It might be a, a nice way of doing it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some, what colour will I go for next? It's kind of hard to pick sometimes, but I think I'll go for a little bit of blue. Okay, so I'm going to use some blue to make some nice dots beside these. So I'm going to put, well, dots or circles. I'm going to put a few of them in just here and there. Okay. Wherever I decide they look good, we can even go on top of the red if we want. We can put a little bit on top of them, on top of those little bumps, okay? And then we have a few around the side here, okay? And I think that looks good. So we're finished with that section now, okay? So before I, I suppose, take off all the masking tape and show you how all our blocks have worked out, there's one last section that we need to look at, okay? And this is this white part here, okay? So we need to fill that up, okay? So there's a few bumps here that I might have to, maybe might even put another couple of eyes on, no harm there. And then some lines maybe outlining these lovely oak leaves that we have, okay? 
So I'm going to have a look at that now. So I think I might even go for some more blue because it'd be like that. Maybe I'll even put in the sky because the sky, it's a really sunny day today, I suppose, and it has been raining for the past week. So it's kind of nice to have the nice blue sky and a white cloud. So I'm going to go with that theme. Okay, so it's whatever you want. Okay, so what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my blue around my oak leaf. Okay, so following the bumps of the oak leaf again. I'm going to go all the way around so again just kind of highlight that and then from there what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide where I'm going to put a few clouds and then we'll see how we get on so I'm going to follow the outline of my leaves first to say there's a really really blue sky shining through the oak leaves in my garden and then we'll have some really really bright white clouds coming through as well and I think that theme should work really out well for the start of summer and for the end of after all the rain that we've had okay so we're welcoming in the summer with our summer totem and then for the wigwam of course you'll be able to build your wigwam have a really cool summer hideout and you'll have your totem right beside it to keep away all the things that you don't want in your wigwam like all the things i suppose maybe all the scary insects that you don't like or that kind of thing now so following around here and we're getting there bit by bit it's a bit of a slow process but it's going to be really worth it in the end okay so we've put in a few clouds here i'm going to show you that now so we have clouds kind of all over the back here so we've got the blue fills up all the space left some nice clouds in between and then i kind of had a, a thought as i was doing that and i said well we've got another patch of blue up here might be nice to put a few clouds in on the blue as well so i stuck some clouds in there as well okay now we've only got a few more things to do before we actually take off the mask of tape and have a look at our token okay so what i'm going to do is this little kind of bump here what i was going to do was i was going to get a little bit of black and i was going to put some eyes on it okay so it's like as if it's like a little some some kind of little set of eyes looking out at you so we're just pretending that there's a few different little creatures peeping out there there's always little little insects having a look look Look, look at you while you're walking around the garden okay now so one last thing before i'm finished i've got a stripe of yellow here okay and i was thinking that we've got beehives over in our garden okay and we like to see the bees going in and out of the flowers and doing all the pollinating and all the things they need to be doing so i had a thought that as a kind of a um a tribute to the bees in all of our gardens i'm going to paint a couple of black stripes over the yellow stripe and that's going to be to represent all the bees and all the bumblebees and all the hard work that they do for us all the time okay so i've got my small paintbrush out gonna maybe take a little bit of that paint off and i'm going to follow a nice line all the way around i'm going to do two of those lines and it's going to be our, our bumblebee our bumblebee line okay and i think that's a nice idea because the bees do such important work and we need to keep them happy and we need to mind them and we need to be aware of them so I think that's a good idea isn't it to put in a tribute to the bees okay so following that line all the way around you don't have to be too careful all the way around nice ring i'm going to put a second one of those in over our yellow so it'll be our bumblebee so you can see the way that's coming around now all the way over here and I'm going to meet it on the other side keep on turning it around as you do it okay bit by bit okay and you do need a small paintbrush for this bit otherwise it'll just take over the whole place okay so just a small paintbrush okay now so if i show you that i hold it up we've got our bumblebee line we have our sections of block color we did our oak leaves here at the back we have some nice oak leaves here i'll show you them we have our birds we have our what else do we have our little set of eyes here and we have all our nice clouds and our other colors okay so i think what we're going to do now is we're going to take off the masking tape now i'm going to start taking off all of our tape that we put on okay so i'm going to start down here it doesn't really matter where you start you need to just find where you well the where, where you the kind of i don't know the edge of the tape and such where that is and try and peel it back off okay or the edge of the masking tape and just peel it off gently and bring it all the way around you see the way the paint is coming off but you've got a nice clean line around like that okay so sometimes it can be hard to see where it is i've got it there i think but it's the, the masking tape is really good because it's, it's kind of made of paper and it doesn't get too sticky so it doesn't really stick to itself that much and by that reasoning then it's easier to take off okay we have another one there now wait i find 
this part here peel it all the way off and we've got our bumblebee line it's like the grand unveiling of the totem peel this one off again keep on going see the way it comes off quite easily yep okay and we have another two i think to take off this one here that was easy to find so this is going to be our our gap in between our clouds okay so we've got two sections of clouds now and we have nice bumps in between and the last bit of tape here uh, just to try and find it here there we go and tape it inside. okay now i'm up this end here and i just had a a memory of what i said to you there a minute ago or well a little while ago i said that this one here was going to be left for the the ever watchful eye of the garden okay to mind our garden to have a look so the last thing i'm going to do is i'm going to get my paintbrush i'm going to get a little bit of the black and i'm going to put a little blob of the black in the middle and that's our eye at the top just going to keep an eye on our garden okay so i'll show that to you now we have our finished totem pole so we have the nice bed at the top with the eyeball looking out over it we have a nice patch of cloud that comes for the sunshine and all the summer things we're going to do some more clouds around here with our lovely oak trees not our oak trees our oak leaves on the back and then we have our bird here we have one eye looking up one eye looking down and the beak coming down some of our triangles some of our nice dots that we made use of our bumps with all the way around there and then some of our block color that comes all the way down and we have our bumblebee for our bees and our red and our purple for some of our favorite colors okay so this is our finished totem and i suppose that's it it's all done and best luck have a really good time making your totem and i'll see you for the wigwam making workshop thank you bye bye